There's an amazing new book out about the childhood of Norm Mineta, the U.S. Secretary of Transportation, uh, uh, U.S. Congressman, who was imprisoned in the Japanese internment camps back during World War II. It's just amazing. Check it out. Ding the bell, leave your comments, and subscribe to our channel. A new book out. It's, it's, uh, it's sold and, and, and positioned as a book for young people, um, but I just found it extraordinary. I, I love this book. It's called Enemy Child, the story of Norman Mineta, a boy imprisoned in a Japanese-American internment camp during World War II by Andrea Warren who has, has written a number of uh, books for young people. Uh, Mineta was the first Asian mayor of, San Jose, of a major city in the United States, San Jose. He was elected 10 times to serve in the U.S. House of Representatives. He was the U.S. Secretary of Transportation in, I believe, the Bush administration, although he's a Democrat. And uh, it's just a, a marvelous story. And on the line with us are both Secretary Mineta and Andrea Warren, the author of this book about Secretary Mineta. And welcome to both of you to the program. Thank you so much for writing this book and for coming on to talk with us about it on the air. Thank you very much, Tom. And Andrea just did a great job of researching uh, and interviewing me over, a, I don't know, three, four year period. I thought this was just, just I mean, there's, it's filled with pictures. It's a large book. It's almost a coffee table book. And it, it, it would be an extraordinary gift for any young person. But I, I think everybody should. I, this, this is a, a part of the history of the United States that we very rarely talk about because it requires some inf, you know, introspection and self-criticism. Secretary Mineta, you, you note in the book uh, when you first, well, first of all, I'm curious if you could just you know, you were around nine or ten years old when you were you and your family were taken off to the to the uh, detention camp, and or, and I noticed throughout the book you refer to yourself and your colleagues or your you know if, if fellow people who were interned as internees. I wonder why that word rather than prisoners. And what was that experience like as a ten-year-old? Well, you know, as a ten-year-old, you're not really conscious about all the things that are going around, but uh, seeing the impact on someone like my father, who was an immigrant from Japan, who came uh, by himself uh, at the age of 14, or my mother, who was a picture bride, uh, coming in 1914. They, they got married uh, in, in 1912, but the immigration people didn't accept picture bride marriages, so they had to get married again. So in terms of the impact, I knew that December 7th uh, was a seminal moment in my life as I looked back on the history of things. Uh, but, you know, at the time, uh, as a 10-year-old, the, the only thing that really bothered me was that after Executive Order 9066 was signed by uh, President uh, Roosevelt, um, oh, hold it. I'm sorry that they're doing some power watching. That's okay. I can hear you just fine. Just keep on going. All right. So after the executive order was signed, the, the notices went up on, on the sides of buildings and uh, uh, utility poles saying, attention, all those of Japanese ancestry, alien and non-alien. And my brother was nine years older than me. And I looked at that and I said, who's a non-alien? He said, that's you. I said, I'm not a non-alien, I'm a citizen. He said, well, in this instance, it means the same thing. Hmm. And so uh, uh, I have always cherished the word citizen because my own government, the United States government, wasn't willing to use that to describe me. And I've always said to audiences, when's the last time you stood on a chair, pounded your chest, and said, I'm a proud non-alien of the United States of America? <laughs> Excellent and everyone point. laughs because no one has ever done that. But, um, you know, and, and so that kind of an impact had its early uh, showings on me, but mm. it wasn't until later, <clears throat> as I grew older, and saw what impact it had on my parents, my older sisters, my older brother, as I was the youngest of the five. 
Yeah. It's, a, it's just an absolutely extraordinary story. Andrea Warren, you're the author of this book about uh, Secretary Mineta. Uh, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering what, in you know, you spent several years with him, interviewing him for the book. You, you know him, I'm, I'm guessing, quite well now. What, what part of this story most struck you? Well, I think Norm just touched on it. You know, the Japanese, when this all happened, I think many of us would have um, probably been extremely depressed. We might have decided to fight back. But the Japanese Americans wanted to show that they were patriotic and to do this. And I'm talking now about a majority because there were some who didn't do this. But for the most part, they decided to be cooperative. Their attitude was, if this is how we can help the war effort, if us going quietly to these camps so that people don't feel threatened by us and so forth is what the government needs from us, we want to help, and this is what we will do. So the circumstances they had to accept were appalling, but they did it. You know, they, they dressed in their best clothing. They packed up their bags to the degree they could. They closed up their homes. They sold their belongings if they could. They had to find homes for their family pets. Norm lost his pet dog in the process. And, and they went without complaining, without uh, uh, fighting back in any sense of it. So this, this had to become their definition of patriotism. And when it was time when the government finally allowed uh, young Japanese-American males to enlist in the Army, and they were drafting them at the same time. Many of them stepped up. Again, not all of them. There were As did back, Secretary Mineta. He, he joined the military. His the pictures are in the book. Well, that was after the war. That's that right. was for that's the what Korean I mean. War. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. I, I thought that's what you were talking about, that, that many of those, that well, some of those people who came out of the camps ended up in the military. I, no, I was talking about during the war. Oh, the I see. It was Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Um, so, Secretary Mineta, when you came home, you, you tell the story in the book, uh, or uh, Andrea Warren tells the story just brilliantly in the book about um, how you came back to San Jose and found that your home was intact. In fact, you talk about, or she talks about, you, you ran from room to room and everything looked the same and all this kind of, and the stuff that was in storage was survived. Um, how common was that? I, my understanding is that many of the Japanese uh, ancestry uh, individual American citizens who were, you know, put in these internment camps, uh, when they came home, everything was gone, and that they had been robbed and ripped off. And in fact, the, that there was, uh, you know, some people have suggested, I know when the, when the, when the essentially reparations were, were being debated or discussed, uh, some people suggested that uh, one of the motives for displacing Japanese people, uh, Japanese ancestry people, or putting them in this, these camps was to steal their stuff, essentially. Um, it, how common was your experience of finding your things intact, and, and, and what do you think about all that? Well, we were very fortunate because uh, uh, our home uh, was rented to a professor at San Jose State College, but we also had an attorney in San Jose by the name of J.B. Peckham, and Mr. Peckham, uh, in the 20s and the 30s and the 40s, if you looked at the the property rules in uh, San Mateo County, or not San Mateo, Santa Clara County, Santa Cruz County, San Benito County, Monterey County, you'd see J.B. Peckham, J.B. Peckham written all over the place, and you'd think, wow, this guy's a big landowner. But what he was doing was to keep the name, the property in his name because of the alien land law. And the alien land law said in Washington, Oregon, and California, if you can't become a U.S. citizen, you cannot own land in our states. Hmm. So in California, we had an alien land law, and uh, so... Uh, the uh, Mr. Peckham owned the land of Chinese, Filipino, and Japanese, and then when the oldest U.S.-born citizen turned 21, then he would turn that land over to them. And so he really saved a lot of people from having their lands uh, cheated or stolen. Some people would would. Uh, uh, transfer their land under uh, powers of attorney, and then uh, those people during the war sold the land and then left 
and people were not able to identify or find where they had gone. So there were a lot of losses through that. But the other part of it was the fact that the, the Issei, the immigrants from Japan who were the farmers who really took land that was um, really a fallow and converted it to rich agricultural lands. And the Farm Bureau was one of those, for instance, in California, promoting the evacuation and internment because they really wanted to get those farmlands uh, and uh, take, it, take over those farmlands from the Japanese. That's, that's, uh, that's remarkable. Secretary Mineta, uh, we, we don't, we're not interning at the moment American citizens. I mean, setting aside the debate around um, uh, criminal justice reform, um, but we are interning now these these immigrants in these in Trump's camps. And I, I, I just I just noticed I only have 30 seconds until we hit a hard break. I'm curious your thoughts on on what's going on now. Well, I was really surprised because I was Secretary of Transportation on 9/11, and there was a great deal of rhetoric about banning Middle Easterners from flying, keep Muslims off airplanes. And here uh, I thought of what we experienced in evacuation, and all of a sudden now we're hearing some of the same rhetoric, including round them up and put them in camps. And I remember when President George W. Bush said, we don't want to have happen today what happened to Norm in 1942.